So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today it's another war game review presented by Noble Knight Games. Thank you very much for sponsoring us. Go on their website, you can buy this game. And this game is Fort Jefferson Attack Game. They should just take that game <laughs> off. Fort Jefferson Attack, 1780. Yeah. Something like that, right? <laughs> so this is a, a two-player almost tactical game mm. uh, about the Chickasaw attack on Fort Jefferson during the American Revolutionary War. In 1780. I yep. got it out. Yep. So, In the Illinois country. Yes. So Now, we recorded a full playthrough of this. Yeah. And it took like 30, 40 minutes. 30 to 40 so minutes, yep. you can go and watch that for like start to finish the game. Yeah. Uh, but this is a short format, light, simple, two-player Hex Encounter War game. Uh, and it's from a company called The Historical Game Company. A company that you cannot misunderstand what it is that they do. Exactly. And uh, We've never played a game of theirs before, right? No, we have not. Uh, no, I, they, I have not. We've got a couple other ones in this series. Yep. yep. And I presume the rules are similar, but I'm not sure. I think they are, or, yeah. Well, like, it's similar e Each concept. of them just has, I think, unique situations. I could and... presume they use the same card engine, maybe. Yep, it does. It yeah. has cards. They have cards. They want one six-sider. So, we might see more from them on a channel uh, for a future date. But this is yeah. this is one of those games, like, the, the map is this big. Right, it's like a legal sized yeah, sheet, but you right? Want that, yeah, that's 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 legal, right. isn't it? Legal like, where size. Like where it's the, the little bit longer than regular yeah, yeah, letterhead yeah. paper. And I, actually, the map's very nice. It's canvas. Yes. <laughs> so it's yeah, because it's not cool. massive. It's a small little thing. They've made it canvas. The printing on it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, it has the counter sheet this big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you just have a few units on each side. Although on the small map, it feels like a lot of units. Oh yeah, particularly the red wave of the British-led <laughs> yeah. Chickasaw Indian units. Dang, and you just covered the board. You know, you flip a card, and the card says you can move this amount of units, and you can attack with this amount of units, yeah. and there might be some kind of special bonus or something. And that's what you do for your turn. You do all your moves. Mm -hmm. There's some defensive fire at a limited capacity. Then you do all your attacks, uh, and then you know again if there's any special event or anything, and then mm -hmm. you kind of rally a couple of your units if you need to, and if you can, and then it flips to the opponent. They do the same thing. You go back and forth. Uh, and then you're trying to get these victory conditions. Uh, the Chickasaw win if they get three of their units inside Fort Jefferson. Fort Jefferson is six hexes uh, in size. As soon as they do it, the game ends immediately. Yep. Uh, and, and you're almost about ready to get that accomplished. Yeah, I, I was surprised because I was like, "This is that would never happen." And then yeah, at the be... end, when you like, yeah. because of the threat to other victory spaces, you you can't leave all your guys in there. So you've got to take some out. Yeah. I killed one of the cannons in there, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, it, it is possible. Yeah, it's it's hard, I think but it's possible. the more difficult of the victory conditions. Well, and the Chickasaw are going to win mainly by destroying the victory yeah. little hexes, so burning you, them. You get the strategy points from occupying blockhouses. Good luck. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very difficult. pretty you, hard. You're going to get one of those a game, maybe, if you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's destruction points on the map where you're like burning light, crops, destroying livestock. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's some fleeing uh, citizens. villages, yeah, vill citizens. Yep. And if you can eliminate them, that's also... The, the distribution of those is kind of easier to kind of pick off that stuff. Like it's a real raid where you're doing mm -hmm. that kind of damage rather than a military victory taking the fort kind of a thing. Yeah. And so, as you threaten and do those raid things, the the regulars in the fort kind of have to come out and get you, and and yep. then it opens up that other avenue. But yeah, it's a very small light game. Took took us forty minutes to play, um, and and that's what it that's what it tries to be. The rule book yeah, is it, it's not pretentious. Four, yeah. four pages, four sides, yeah. two you're, pages. You're not buying this game thinking this is going to be a detailed simulation of this style of fighting that no. takes three hours to play and the robots just that. not yeah it's, like, it's it, they've yeah. they've it's not the most studious examination or simulation they try right. to make a reasonably balanced playable enjoyable to play experience yeah the game is not intended as an exact <laughs> simulation or recreation of the actual historical events but is designed to provide a competitive game that captures some of the flavor of the battle and so. do you think it lived up to that thesis. Box checked. Absolutely. It yeah, did. I, I believe it, it 
literally the thesis statement there was proven. Like, uh, uh, you know, the the image on the back you kind of mentioned whilst we were going through the rules. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Like, oh, yeah. The painting is, like, very intense. Yep. And that's, <laughs> like... All, all of that yeah, is on it's, the board. It's represent right? Yeah. Here's yep. the blockhouse. There's the fort in the background. Here's the little villages. All yep. of that's in the same shape on the map, and it's very obvious and evident of like, yep, this is this is the battle of fighting, mm -hmm. and things like those blockhouses. If you get too close to them, it can be lethal. They're extremely yeah. hard to dislodge, uh, almost impossible. You have to have supported attacks and have a bonus and roll a six effectively. Right. Uh, so th some of those things are very difficult to do. Or a five do, or a six. Which makes sense, right? Big yeah, old yeah. tall blockhouse with a swivel gun on mm -hmm. top. A, f a few a few raiders aren't going to take that. No. Uh, you know, you've got the fort. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to assault the fort. A lot of strong units in there. Attacking mm -hmm. up the hill and uh, over the palisade. Very, very difficult. Very yep. challenging. You, you, know, you run up, the defensive fire happens, you get forced back. You've mm -hmm. got to do it again and again. And even then, you have to start making these really big attacks and roll really well to, yeah. to try and breach those walls. I, I think the one thing I liked about, as as we were playing through it, there is a high kind of reliance on luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can mitigate that by, you, you know, taking advantage of the events. Because a lot of those are like, this unit or this this leader, any units around it are plus one. So you, yeah. you're going to know those are coming. So you're going to kind of be preparing for that. But it is, it, it really is relying on luck. That's what this is. It's a game, right? I, I think the yeah. word, maybe that's why they called it Fort Jefferson Attack yeah, Game. Yeah, it's not it's, Fort Jefferson Attack Simulation. simulation. <laughs> it, it really is a game. Yes. If you sat here and rolled fives and sixes all day, man. You, you're going you're gonna to steamroll the yeah, game. Yeah, steamroll it. <laughs> And, and and it's a game, right? But there is, I think the thing that I liked about the combat was it was kind of, you had to understand the rules. You know, you can't move and do a ranged attack. You got to move up, get into hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighting and, and move forward. Support is very important. Yep. You can do it up to two units, correct? Just, just, yeah, so one unit attacks and, and, and one another. can support. So it's, it's a plus one. But sometimes that's what you got to oh, do. And a plus that makes a big difference. Yeah, it, big it, difference. it really does. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting, the cannon, both the field cannon uh, in the fort and the uh, swivel guns, they couldn't outright kill uh, units. Yeah, if it, they're it, shooting at range... The, they're just breaking them. Yeah. Now, if they, if they do that to a disordered broken unit, then it would kill them. Yeah, but that's. But it's it's hard I'm, to I'm do. I'm not that. sure that came up in our play. No, it didn't. It, it could have, but but yeah, it's you got to kind of look for that, and I think that, that you might can't be blow some, them away entirely no, with a ranged. That might have been something I looked at differently. Maybe I would have. I, I I don't know. It, it's just I, I actually like that there's some little bitty points of strategy. You got you got to game yeah, the, the system. You got to figure it out. Little bits of chrome. I enjoy this because if I'm doing. A kind of a an Indian raid on a on a village with a fort. Mm -hmm. I kind of want it to feel like how I imagine it would be. Yeah, which chaotic. Yeah, but uh, that's what it was, right? It's run through the fields, destroy a couple fields. I got this flanking party that goes onto island number one, kind of running mm -hmm. around the sides. O all of this stuff happening, and you've got these regulars in this fort going like, "Well, oh, we crap. can either sit here yeah. or we can go out and help." Yeah, and that's a tough choice to make. It is. H how much of that do you do? How far do you go out without leaving your fort unprotected? You know, yeah. trying to defend in these buildings. You got your little muskets and your rifles popping out of these wooden villages yep. and stuff. Like it, it you know, it, yeah. it felt like how this kind of thing would have happened mm -hmm. within a very simple framework, which I thought was that was it yeah. was very fun. It felt I, like how I it imagined how, it how you would imagine it would feel. And, and like I said, your comment is exactly correct. But there's some little elements that you can tack onto that and really make it, make it a game. You, you know, yeah. you, there's some things I could have done differently. I think as the colonials that might have helped. We talked about defending the aptly named island number one. Yes, I, I'm sure that's what it was called on maps. They, they probably didn't name it, but you know, we talked about some of that, and that's fun. That's always part of the fun of these games. Is kind of, oh, what could I have I done done differently, or strategizing, or understanding better. 
you know, you're learning. You're learning a little bit about the history. And the boon for a game that takes 40 minutes is that you can learn and implement your changes to strategies very quickly. Well, you can set it up and play it again. Exactly. In, in two hours, you've played it twice. And if, and you, and if you get rolled, no one yeah, cares because it no didn't take deal. very long and it wasn't that yeah. big of a, it, 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 you know, an investment of your kind yeah. of energy and time. You just kind of do it. You roll with it. It was fun. Let's set yeah. it up again. And because... The, the 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 Chickasaw Indians come in, you know, however kind of however you want them to. Even that, you could totally change how things, mm-hmm. how the attack is even conducted. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can set up defensively differently, but then you put a bunch of stuff down here. Well, guess what? The Indians roll from the other side. Right. So it, it's a there's a lot of replay value in this. Yeah. From that standpoint, understanding that you know the a few choices here and there can really change a game oh, because yeah. it's so small. It's also a little bit brittle in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, that's, it's enjoyable again, f- especially for what it is for a $36 game with a box on noble. Night, yeah. This is, this was re- really fun. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll show you the map and how it works. And then we will wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. As you can see, very, very small map here. I think this is, an 11 by 17, maybe? Uh, but not, not, it, this is, this is it. <laughs> right, not, not big. Two, two little decks of 10 cards each. Uh, turn track, dead box. So this, this is the end of the game. It was a, this was a Chickasaw victory. But basically on your turn, you are going to flip a card. And this says you can move 11 Chickasaw units. You can attack with six Chickasaw units. And then there's a little special, all Chickasaw units may be rallied at the start of the Chickasaw player's turn, even if they're in an enemy zone of control. Normally, you rally at the end of your turn, and normally you cannot rally if you're in an enemy zone of control. Uh, So, why that's important is because you might flip all your guys back who are disrupted, and they can still go and move and attack. But uh, normally that kind of breaks the sequence of play. So, what you're going to do is you're just going to move 11 of your units... And we'll have a quick look at some units here. They have three values on them. Uh, from left to right, they have an attack value with a range in black above it. In the middle, that's their defensive value. And then on the right, that's their movement factor. So you are going to just, you know, you do them kind of one at a time. You're a little 11 units. He's got four moves, one, two... Three, four. He's gonna go one, two, three. He's gonna jump into the fort, and that's gonna be his. He has to end his move. If you move into a building or into a woods or into the fort, you have to end your movement. And we're trying to kind of get into the fort. If we get three guys in the fort, that's gonna be our victory uh, auto victory conditions. And you're like, oh, we're really close to that. Well, you're not, because you have to stop when you go into enemy zones of control, so he can't get through. And then this guy has to stop when he goes into the river, so he can't make that jump quite yet. Uh, and then, you know, it's moving guys around. We, we're going to attack this little blockhouse. This guy's going to go one, two, three, four. He's going to try to go across the river. And, and then maybe this guy's going to come out of this building, and he's going to go there. So just moving guys, right? You know how to move guys. And then, once you've done all your moves, the opponent has a defensive fire phase. They can pick three of their units to do defensive fire. You can't do any movement, you can't combine any attacks, so it's just pick three guys and they get to shoot. So we want to kind of get these guys out of the fort. So we're going to say this guy's going to attack him and he's going to roll a die and he's going to add his combat value. So we're going to add a two to our d6 and we roll the four, five, six and we look at his defensive value, which is a five. We exceed it by one, so he's going to flip over to his reduced side, and he has to move back, he has to retreat two hexes. Great, so that was a successful defensive fire. Now this guy, he's a, he's a two as well, so he's, he's going to add two to a d6, but this guy has a six defensive value, so we need to roll better. Amazing, five, six, seven, we did one better, he's going to flip over, and he's going to retreat as well. <clears throat> Uh, And then we've got one more, let's attack uh, the guy in the river. So we're gonna roll and add two, four, five, six. He's a five, six, 
So we go one, two. So that was a very, very successful defensive five phase. So now, as the chick assault, we can pick six units and we can attack with those. And why that was important is because when you attack, if you have a unit adjacent to you, they can support and give you a plus one. Well, we lost our support here. We can't do any support attacks in the fort that we were trying to do. So here we've got a two uh, against a six. So we're going to add two to this d6. Three, four, five is uh, not enough to, e to exceed this. So we miss. Uh, we've got a two plus one is a three going against a seven. Let's say that was a six. So I've got six, seven, eight, nine. He's a seven, but he's in a blockhouse, which is plus two. So nine and a nine is equal, which is a miss. You have to exceed the defensive value. So knowing that, this attack is impossible to succeed at. So you don't attempt this attack until you have add plus one to any attack uh, by the whitehead unit this turn. For example, if you had that card, you, you'll, this guy is whitehead over here. You're trying to get him into a position where he could do a good attack. Maybe he can run over here and, and, and you know, you can make that attack. So then it's another plus one. We mean, if we rolled a six, s seven, eight, nine, ten, we could get over that nine and we could do this. Attacking the block houses is very difficult in this game. There's just not as many DRMs that you can get. But yeah, you do all of your attacks that you want to do up to six units. And when you attack and you support, that's two attacks. So you could do three supported attacks or six individual attacks or any combination up to six. And then, and then, well, it was this guy, wasn't it? Once you're done with all of that, you then do a rally phase and you can rally guys who are not in an enemy zone of control. So, which is these guys. That was actually fortuitous that those guys uh, retreated that way. If you ever have to retreat into a space that you cannot retreat into, e.g., into uh, enemy zones of control. You'll just eliminate it outright. If you ever attack someone, let's say we've got this attack here, he's gonna roll, let's say he rolls a six. We've got six, seven, eight. If you exceed the defensive value by one, you flip and retreat. If you exceed it by two or more, they're just eliminated straight out of the game. And so the point of this game is, is that the, the Chickasaws run in from the edges of the board and they're trying to get these little star hexes to drop these destruction tokens. And they're trying to eliminate the fleeing civilians who start on the board here. And they're trying to kind of retreat into safety. So you, it's it's a real, it's an Indian raid. You're rushing in, destroying livestock crops, killing the villages. And then, you know, the game kind of ends once you've done all of that. Or if you can occupy the fort for like a military victory, that happens as well. But that's, that's the game. You do all of that, then it goes to the other player. It's their turn. They're going to do all of their moves. You're going to do your Chickasaw Defensify. They're going to do seven American attacks. And then all Illinois regular units, which are these light blue ones, if they move, they may move two additional hexes during movement this turn. Normally the regulars have a movement of three, so that would go to a five. Uh, the Chickasaw Indians have a movement of four. They're a little bit more mobile, naturally. But this is them sorting, right? So they're running out of the fort, doing some attacks, coming back in. Uh, it is the concept of that. But th that's the game. This is not a complicated game. You're going through a number of turns, and you're getting victory points for destruction markers, killing the civilians, occupying blockhouses, uh, and, and that effectively, that's about it. So that's how the game works. What we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that's how the game works. It's, it's a pretty looking game. Oh, yeah. I really like the canvas map. I, I think the unit uh, counters are pretty nifty. They've got that small silhouette. Yeah. I, I think it's well done. Yeah, definitely. it was all very functional. And, yeah. you know, this is the kind of game that you're going to play with your dad on Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Or it's the kind of game... Or an uncle who likes history and yeah. never games, you, right? You'll, you'll never get him to play some of these big bad boys. Yeah. Hey, Empire in, of the Sun. instead of playing Monopoly, let's sit down for 40 minutes right. and yeah. play this little game. I think that's exactly what the niche that this fills is, and then, yeah, definitely. And then all of a sudden they're like, ooh, that was fun. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I've got two more in the series. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to play one of those. And as you move up, <laughs> hey, Dad, let, let's try Empire of the Sun. Or <laughs> I, I, I'm being facetious, but you can kind of make a leap. Maybe you go to a small tactical game, or yeah. maybe you go to something like Combat Commander that also is kind of this scale and uses cards and... Uh, yeah, I could definitely see this as a nice kind of introductory to someone who's not a gamer or, or a gamer. It's one of those games, kind of how 
that we do where you're like, we'll play a big game. Yeah, play this for 45 minutes. Yeah, just you just whip this and like... Yep, as a cool down, right? Yeah, and what was nice about this is I'd never heard of the attack on Fort Jefferson. Sure, yep. So this was something new for me. So I learned a little bit and I got to, you know, experience and play around with some of that. I always like something that's that's new. Even if, mm-hmm. you know, we've played a number of American Revolutionary War games, we've played a number of games with, with Indians, these kinds of raids and stuff, but not this one, not this tactical situation. No. And, and, and so I, I always really like that kind of thing. Yeah. It's just, it's always interesting to me uh, just to see something that's f- fresh from a thematic standpoint yeah. as well. For, in well that and I, I would deign to propose that this is probably the only game on this subject. That would be my guess. Uh, especially at this level. Right. For sure. S- small engagement, kind of, I don't want to say inconsequential, because I don't think any of the fighting, even on the frontier during the, rev- the revolution, was inconsequential. But this is kind of on the western side of Illinois, up against the Mississippi River. There wasn't a lot of fighting going on. You know, that, that was back in the 13 colonies. This was actually, technically, the Illinois country, I think it was part of Kentucky and... Oh, man. Kind of that terror. So it, but it was cool that that a game was on this subject. I've got a couple more of these. Attack on Cahokia. Um, Cahokia Mounds is actually in Illinois as well. So my guess is that's very close. And then there's a Saratoga game that I have. I don't know, and I don't know if you know. Mm-hmm. Is does Fort Jefferson exist as a historical site you I, can visit? I don't believe it does. Um, maybe I should have done. Actually, I was reading kind of a summary of it on Wikipedia about the battle. I, I'm not sure what's there today. Or if there's anything. Yeah. Cause that, again, we talk about this fairly regularly. I enjoy local history. Sure. And this is the kind of thing where like, you know what, if you happen to be in this area, mm-hmm. and even if there's just like a memorial or a plaque or something, right. it might be interesting to go and see this. My, my guess is there's something like that. Yeah, there's got to be, right? I, I mean, I think about Kekionga and some of those other games we've played, kind of the Northwest Territory. There's a there's a little marker up in, in Fort Wayne that, that identifies, they called it, I think it was the... I can't remember what they called it. The Indians had a different name. But yeah, I'm sure there's a little marker there. But there's not a big fort because it was only a small fort, right? Right, but it, you know, it's I, I like bits and pieces that shed light on things which are uh, yeah. not overlooked. Seems like a harsh word, but it's kind of right. true. That, that you know, bits and pieces that are more localized. That like this was some people's yeah. lives. This it was a huge event. Yeah, and changed a number of people's lives significantly. Yeah. And it's also was interesting as a tactical situation yep and even from like a grander level mm-hmm. why were the you know the british were influencing the the chickasaw indians to do this to try yep. and draw troops away or to yep. distract them from the wider war and things like that and kind of set the well, continent aflame and vice versa you know games like liberty or death really you know a lot of people maybe that don't understand the history are like well why are the natives working with the british they hate them they treat them d- disdainfully but, but, but they we were, paid them a lot of money. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you gave them things, wampum, brandy, money, support. But it's it's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend, yeah. right? Isn't that kind of that old saying? So the, the Chickasaws and the Native Americans, and, you know, they didn't want the colonials to come west. So they were going to fight. They were going to fight for yeah. it. And really for about 100 years, 150 years, you know, the, the Americans, as we moved west came into contact with the natives. I mean, there's plenty of games we've played on that, yes. right? Plains Indian Wars, you know, Comancheria that I played, Navajo Wars. There's there's, there's, a, lot there's a lot of examples of that. So, but, it, but it's nice to play a game like this because this would be, you know, a single raid and placing a village in Liberty or Death, right? right it, would, it would be, yeah. it would be on one battle scale. on King Philip's War. Yep. That type of thing. Yep. Obviously, that's a different time period, but... But here you get 20 counters on a board yeah, and you move it around. It's, it's nice all about scale. Where, like, that little one action in one game or one mm-hmm. combat, this this is what that is. And having a little bit of context of what that might look like. I always right. think it's interesting to see different yeah. scales in the same time period and how those things relate. I, yeah. I just really enjoy that Scale kind of thing. is always a very important part of any war game. And, and I think the more we play and the different types we play, the more I realize that. We learned the other day uh, with uh, Air Accord, you know, yeah. the, concept of some scale and distance and it was it was pretty interesting one other comment about this game i I liked the cards i 
I think looking back on the cards, I feel like those numbers should be for a 24 turn game. Yeah. Pull in four or five of those that allow you to move 10 units and attack with eight. That feels like it should be scaled back a little bit if you want the game to go 24 turns. Which I don't think it ever would. Right, so make it 12, right? If you're going to allow eight yeah. attacks, make it 12, because frankly, I'm not sure the Colonials have the gumption or the ability to, to, to survive for, for yeah, 24. Yeah, I think, they, I think the, the, the American forces feel that a loss... Way more, more than the yeah uh, than like the natives, yeah. You know, one or two losses there, and you're like, oh no. Well, and and that's shown out here by we had the same number of dead guys. Well, you had eight, I had six. Oh, it's only six. These I'm not counting; they were not combatants. Uh, but and right? yeah, you now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys on the map. You've got twelve, three, four of which are fixed cannons. So you've got three mobile units. Fourteen. Uh, yeah, like oh, these were dead too. Sorry. I took them out of the board when we, oh, were, yeah. when we were discussing some other strategies. But so yeah, we we actually have the same amount of dead in the pool. But I have a lot more. You than have you. double the units yeah. on. So that's what I'm saying. This maybe should be a 12 turn game, or you scale these back, say 30 percent, rather than eight, seven, six, nine, eight. You know, maybe those are reduced by two or three each time, and it makes it more of a. If you wanted to lengthen the game. Yeah, you would lengthen the game that way. Or just rifle it up. Man, let's get this over in six turns, right? And, and yeah, that's kind of what it That's I, what it boiled down to. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought the yeah. game was fun. This does exactly what it says that yep. it intends to do. Do I need to read that again? Uh, yes. <laughs> really? No. Okay. But like... The game is not intended <laughs> as an exact simulation. Designed to be a competitive game with some flavor. That's it. Yes. And it does exactly that. Yeah. It, and it, it plays in like 40, yeah. 40, 50 minutes if you're going I, really long. Once you know the rules, I think this is a 20 to 30 minute game. Yeah. and Right? Because it's not going to last that long. And there's a place for that. And yeah. it, it has merit and to it because not everyone wants to play a six hour game. Yeah. Or, we do. Or a 24 hour game. Yeah, right. You know, some people are just, three weekend hey, game. let's do this little light game with someone yeah. at work on a lunch break. Yep. Or I'm, this is very small. You can get a Ziploc bag version of it as well. Yep. Take it with you on vacation. Yep. When you're going to go well, visit could, Port Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> right. you very easily could do that. The other thing, I have a penchant for collecting kind of American Revolutionary War games. These are three that I will put on my shelf. Yep. I will add them to my annual post on the blog that talks about games of the American Revolution that I played. And this will, this will have a place on the lighter fair side of that of that list and and that's fine right and that's but this is the kind of game you're actually going to play with someone yeah on you get together on a fourth of july have a big barbecue yeah you, you're going to get someone to sit down and play a 40 minute tactical game you, it's yeah. less likely you're going to get four people to sit down for liberty or death for eight hours. well I, i'm not going to pull out almost a miracle uh which is like a 12 hour <laughs> like, game which is awesome but i'm not going to pull that out that's harder to do yeah this yeah. is much easier to do. And, Absolutely. And that's why they're that's why people make these games. That's why mm -hmm. they sell. And that's mm -hmm. why they have a place in our war game collection. Yep. I Absolutely. I, I did want to say one other thing. So Blue Panther, we already mentioned they print these. Yeah, they're a print on demand. I, I wanted to thank them because Stephen I think his name is Stephen Jones. Am I right in that? Stephen King. No, that's the designer. The designer is Stephen Kling, but I think the gentleman that owns Blue Panther, I believe, is Stephen. I don't know. Blank. I, I'm pretty sure it's Steven. It's Steven. Right. And so it was I, not... I wanted Sorry. to mention, the reason I found out about this, he sent me a fairly detailed email with a PDF attachment, because there are 10 new games that they just got released from the Historical Game Company, and okay. he wanted me just to, hey, be aware of these, Grant. So I looked them over. I included them in my, I think it was the May... No, it was the June... Wargame Watch on the blog. I, I asked him, can we have a couple of these to review? He wanted to send all 10 of them to me. And I'm like, <laughs> we don't have the space. <laughs> Steve, I, I said, I don't have the time to play all 10. Give me two or three. And I kind of like these topics. So he, he sent me these three. So I wanted to thank him. I, I think he's a very interesting chap. Works with Holland Spiel, right? Uh, and, and at White Dog uh, Games. But, but he fills a very cool niche in that smaller publisher yeah. area, because these are print on demand, right? They're not printing a thousand copies of this and sitting it on a shelf. No. 
when you order this, when you click order, they're going to print this. They probably got the map. Well, no, he probably prints the maps. Yeah, even, I'm not even sure, after I'm not you sure order. with the canvas yeah. maps how that works. But it's it's a print-on-demand model, so therefore you're going to pay a little more, right? That's why it's 36 or 32 for the poly bag. Go ahead and get the box version. It's $4, it's $4 more. dollars more for the box. You can put box. it on the shelf and it's clean. Um, but, you, you know, those, those guys, to me, are innovators. Um, they do this stuff. They print this way. They do different things. Uh, Amabel Holland, I, I just didn't... Sorry, I'm going on and on, but... <laughs> Did an interview with her on her new game, Siege of Mantua, which yep. is a Napoleonic game. Which looks amazing, by the way. They have blocks that are printed on. Uh, which is, The blocks are yeah. printed. They're not stickers. It is actual printing on the block. That's cool. Yes. Steve, Steve came up with that at Blue Panther. So the reason I bring that up, give guys like this a chance. Look at their stuff. Check out a game. Yeah, I, I agree. It, Blue it's, Panther is a really great gateway for people to get into war game publishing. Yeah. You're not going to make a fortune right. doing that, but it, it enables, I don't know, it's a really good platform for people who are like, I'd like to make some war yep. games. How and, do I do it? And you can do it. It's yeah. much, to me, it's much easier than like self-publishing. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of, it kind of is self-publishing in a way. Well, but know, it, it's a really good it's format. It's self-publishing, but this is fairly high quality stuff. Especially for what it is. We Absolutely. play some other smaller war game publisher stuff that frankly aren't as high quality. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's printed on a, a laser printer and it's just, it's just not as nice. This is nice. Yeah. I mean, this is a nice game. I, I would be proud to own this and pull this out with my father and... Who's, yeah, who's gone? God rest his soul. But anyway, I I digress. I go on and on. I just As we are up. want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me more than you. I Fort think. Jefferson attack game from the historical game company. Yeah, check it out. Give it a look. Give it a look over the rest of their catalog as well. Uh, this was the other question I wanted to ask. So mm -hmm. the other two that we've got over there are yeah. Amray of Games. Are they, they are all. Like all ten of no, them? No, I, I think they had a couple of Napoleonic games. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. They are not all AMREP but games, that's, though. That's, that's I, good. I want to well, say one was an American Civil War game. I, I can't remember. But yeah, so. it's, it's worth having a little look yeah. and understanding what these are mm -hmm. and check it out because you might find something that's enjoyable and eminently playable as well. Well, and you can play this solo. Oh yeah, There's there no is reason no can. reason you can't, there's nothing hidden other than the cards, but you just reveal a card. Do what it says, take the yeah. best action, and move on. I might try these other two solo, just because they're quick playing, simple, and I think people are, are deserving of hearing about these products, because somebody's put their time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears into this, and made an interesting and little game. And it shines a light on a game yep. you've never played a Yep. A, a historical event that we've never played a game on. That's that's what that's you love yep. to see it. Yep, you really do. And George Rogers Clark is a stud. If I you don't, don't know, know who that is. Historically, he kind of was in the Indian frontier during the American Revolutionary War. He took over Fort uh, Sackville, which was in Vincennes. Didn't even fire a shot, and the British surrendered to him. He was so badass. So maybe the British are just weak. Well, they were in Vincennes and yeah, this place is a dump. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but anyway, very cool character of history. I've read several books on him. Being from Indiana, he was kind of an Indiana guy, meaning he was in Indiana for a while. Right, he, he operated. Was, he was it. from Virginia, I believe. But anyway, very cool. Check it out. History is one of the reasons I play these games. So. Yes, so Fort Jefferson Attack Game, give it a look. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from the And I'm Grant.